Okay, so what does it mean? You talk about trial region, right? Let me copy the equation from the last page. I equal to W on L mu C ox V G S minus V T V D S minus V D S square over two. I, I did not look at the cheat sheet, right? Because I worked with this for a long time. But I really hope that you can try to memorize this if you have nothing to do. <laughs> try to memorize it. Okay, now, when the VDS is small, for example, it is 0 0.1 volt, what happened to VDS square? It becomes 0 0.01 volt square, right? Even smaller, correct? So when you have a small VDS, we can ignore the quadratic term. Right? So I will be equals to W on L mu C ox V G S minus V T times V D S. Because here I just ignore the V D S square over two term. Do you see this? Because this is small. I assume that I apply a small V D S across the transistor, not a big one. Okay? So VDS square is small, mathematically, right? Because this was 0 0.1, this is 0 0.01, okay? Now, let me make it clear, what is I? I is just IDS, right? We usually just say I, but it is IDS. So basically, I have a something like this. This is called, this is, this is called D, this is called S. And I apply VDS to it, I get IDS. That is the meaning of this equation, right? For a given VG. Well, if you only look at this two terminal, then isn't that VDS divided by IDS equals to W? No. Equals to 1 over. W on L mu C ox V G S minus V T. Do you see that? I just put V D S here, move I D S to the right, and then move this whole thing to the left. It becomes one over this whole thing, right? How do you define a resistor? You apply a voltage to it and you measure the current. Their ratio is the resistance, right? This one does not depend on IDS or VDS. So this is a resistor. Right? So when you have a small VDS across the transistor, it works very well as a linear resistor. And the value is given by this. And the good thing is, I can change this resistor on the fry, resistance on the fry. I just need to change the VGS, then I will get different R on. If I have a larger VGS, then my R on is smaller. You have learned the IDVD curve before. If you forgot, basically what you say is, for a given VDS, what is the ID at different VGS, right? For example, I bias the transistor at one volt, uh, Vg equal to one volt, and then I start increase the VDS, the current will increase. For small VDS, you see that here is basically like a straight line. This is just like a resistor, right? Think about a resistor. If I apply a V to the resistor and then I measure the current, isn't that I should get a straight line? And this is one over the resistance, right? But very often we actually plot the V here and then I here sometimes, right? And then this is the resistance. It's just swapping the graph, right? But the point is that this curve, although it's highly nonlinear, if you zoom into this small region, you see that they're basically straight line. And that makes sense based on this equation because VDS square can be ignored 
in this region. Right, so the point you want to get is that if you want to use transistor as a resistor, you can do that. You just need to bias it with a small VDS. And this is a tunable resistor on the fly. Just change the gate voltage, you get different resistance. Okay? This is almost the only time we look at this linear regime in this class. But this is very useful. Okay, any questions? Yeah. Acidents to be, say, like supercapacitors, so you have more tunability in that range? Uh, yeah, you say that whether we can change the C also that we can more t have more tunability. Uh, yeah, you can change this. Yeah, you can pick something that is... Uh, yeah, but then you, this is a transistor, right? So you need to have the transistor with this large capacitance. For example, you can increase, or uh, this does, is not controlled by you, right? You need to pick the right device. Or you can increase the width, right? W, because you designed that. Um, yeah, but the most important thing is that, as you said, you can tune it using VGS, right? After fabrication, you have a lot of variation but you just change your VGS to get what you want. Yeah. So let's quickly see if you understand uh, what it is, right? We, we actually uh, can do this. I do have an equation on the lower left corner. Don't look at that. Now, if I change the mobility with L double, right? And then gate outside thickness reduced by half, what will happen to the R on? Think it as a resistor. I have a resistor, right? How about let's try together. I have, I increased the mobility of the electron by two times. What sh should, what will happen to the resistance? Huh? Half. Because you have uh, less, right? Sorry, I was not able. Less, yeah? Just common sense, right? Moving faster, resistor must be lower, right? And we know everything is linear, right? So we do that. What if I uh, have 2x the width? What happened to the resistance? Again, further by half, right? Because resistor, why the sub supposed to be better? Good. And then you say... Now we double the length. What happened? Double the resistance, right? So it go back to R on over divided by two. Now the last one, a little bit difficult. What if the gate outside thickness is uh, half? Okay, very good. You relate this to capacitance because we know capacitance is going to change. But when the thickness reduced by half, what happened to the capacitance? increases because of this equation, right? So the capacitor is going to be double. When capacitor double, how is it going to affect my resistance? Huh? Half. Because it induces more electrons, right? So this is going to be further divided this by half. So okay? Make sense? Right? Here I can explain a little bit more. When the T os reduce, C os increase, and then the Q will increase, so R will reduce. Okay? Yeah. You can try this equation, right? But you, you will get the same thing. I let you do yourself, right? It's easy, the same. You just plug in, right? Okay? So, this is very important. You see that once you understand the nature of the transistor, you don't need the equation. And that is the insight.